Hi everyone, I hope you have enjoyed the previous video about cancers up to confirming and staging and also managing the disease. As promised, we will talk about two different factors that will influence your decision to go for surgery. So these are the receptivity and operability. So let's move on. These two are distinct terms and not to be confused. How do you define receptibility? This is determined by the technical basis. In another words, it means is the skill and the experience of a surgeon also the facilities provided right so the definition of acceptability is the ability to achieve on block oncological reception and with acceptable functionality of patient post-op. One example, one might say a particular tumor is not resettable, but the other might be the opposite. So it's usually the decision is by the most experienced surgeon. And remember this, always discuss this during the multidisciplinary team effort. So if the tumor is not acceptable of the moment, we can always go back and try strategy number two. For those of you who do know what strategy number two, can always refer to the previous video in which it is the new adjuvant therapy and coupled with a definitive surgery and plus minus adjuvant therapy. So after the new adjuvant therapy, the tumor might be shrink and it's time to reevaluate. Remember this, resettability doesn't fall on one single surgeon. Always, always multidisciplinary team effort. Move on to this word, operability. Is the consideration of the benefits over the risk to the patient upon a definitive surgery. The word here is benefit over risk upon a definitive surgery. Remember? Definitely, surgery is oncological resection. So you have to take account of the patient age, comorbidities, performance status, and nutrition. And last and not the least is always autonomy. Remember this, even though it's not really in operability, but always put on the back of your mind, the patient have autonomy over his body. After taking into account of all these factors, you can, yes, always discuss in the MDT, whether a major surgical procedure and its attending morbidity is justifiable always remember this when you want to subject your patient for a definitive surgery always look at receptability of the tumor and the operability of the patient so in summary for operability there are a lot of factors coming in so for nowadays age hmm 
age is really it's just a number if you want to look at the life expectancy rate but remember there are always some outliers so that's why age for personally I will just take a pinch of salt so all probability depend much on the comorbidities that's number one number two is the performance status of the patient and the last is of course nutrition comorbidities you can have uh, diabetes hypertension but but there is a score is called American Society of Anesthesiology for ASA score performance status you can have a European consensus of oncological group ECOT status or you can use Konopsky performance status KPS or the best you can use six minute working test for nutrition wise is you can use a lot of tools that are measure nutrition risk score and my personal favorite is the subjective global assessment so this video we are going to introduce a little bit on all these factors let's move on ASCA score is used mostly by anesthetist alright so you have ASA 1 ASA 2 ASA 3 ASA 4 and ASA 5 alright so it's just an introduction we are going to make more videos on this but ASA score 1 is for normal healthy patient so ASA 2 is for those mild and well controlled comorbidities the comorbidities here it very quite specific is diabetes hypertension and lung disease such as a uh, asthma or coad remember the keyword here is it must be well controlled asa tree they have a severe systemic disease but not decapitating it's actually the complication of these four diseases in which they have a long history of stroke long history of myocardial infarction long standing coad right? and kidney disease right and number four is those with severe systemic diseases and rather decapitating all those are the recent complicated diseases from diabetes hypertension hyper asthma which is you can have a recent stroke recent mi recent coad and of course agitation failure asa5 are those patients are not expected to survive with or without a surgery and asa5 basically are those patients who is moribund and we are not going to do surgery on the patient as a rule of thumb if we were to do a definitely surgery for cancer patient we should do patient only on asa1 asa2 asa3 is about 50 50 so if asa4 you really really have to talk to your anesthesiologist and you give a time frame because why cancer you cannot wait you can't wait all right so this is asa4 if asa5 sorry you cannot do anything on the patient this are uh, actually non-operable patients so let's get to ECOT score European consensus for oncological group ECOT score is looking at how active is the patient it always starts from zero so you have it's got zero it got one it got two it got three it got four it got five 
most of us here, we can do 100% of the activities at home. You can jump, you can shout, right? You can run. So you are equal to zero. If you cannot run, maybe 25% of the time, you are unable to do anything. But you can only do most of the activities. 75% of the time is equal to one. Equal to you need assistance because you can only maybe do 50% of the time. Equal three, mm, you are already bad pound. Equal four is less than 25%. And is there equal five? Yes, equal five is dead. Why is there equal five? It's for forensic. So, in for you to decide your patient to go for a definitely surgery, it always zero, one, and two. Three, the same thing that like ASA score, you have to discuss with your anesthesiologist. Oh, about four, four, you are not going to do anything. It's actually you have to put the patient on strategy number three, which is palliative. All right. So for equal three, you must remember the diagram just now is interrelated. Sometimes because of nutrition, malnutrition can cause equal three. So we can actually upgrade the equal status to become equal two. Then you can consider to do a definitive surgery. There's another one, Konopsky performance score. Konopsky performance score is looking at how active you are able to do it. Maybe you are 0% and up to 100%. If you are Konopsky 0%, that means you are dead. And if you are like an equal zero, you are Konopsky 100%. So Konopsky is not only for cancer patients. However, you still can use this score and we will understand. Like if the ECOT score is simplify the Konopsky performance score. Alright, so this is what happened. You will only do the surgery if the patient have out more than 50% of the Konopsky performance score. As you can see, both ECOT and KPS are very subjective. So that is another way to convey the performance status of the patient in which is quite objective, which we call it a six minute walking test. This is developed by American Thoracic Society. And this involves measuring the distance of a patient that can walk on a level course in six minutes the main predictive variables are number one gender number two age and number three is height these three factors could eventually affect the effect what we measure is the spo2 the heart rate the respiratory rate and the breathlessness of the patients and the normal distance for a, let's say, a equal zero patient will be about 400 to 700 meters without breathlessness. And that is a reference value against these three uh, factors. However, like we're looking at the trend rather than looking at the absolute number. So this is another score that is important. Uh, for you to uh, evaluate the performance of the patient. So this week is a rather light video, but uh, we must understand in order for you to subject patient for surgery, you must look at the tumor, which is the visibility and the patient, the operability, and only then you will subject the patient for a major surgery. And please remember, 
always discuss the case before you embark on the strategy. Remember the previous video, we have 3 plus 1 strategy in which you must discuss to win the multidisciplinary team. We will further discuss about this MDT in an other video, but you must understand it's always discussed as what Mr. Kuma says. Surgery is not about cutting the patient, but it's about planning. I hope you uh, you all have already learned something today as well. So please remember to like, subscribe and hit the notification button. So the next week we are going to talk about surveillance and we are going to introduce you some more terms in which most of us are confused about are the recurrence free survival, disease free survival and the overall survival. So stay tuned for case search. So this lastly this is case search. Bye.